Well, welcome everyone to today's webinar, Transformations and Composite Functions, uh, brought to you by Texas Instruments Australia. My name is Frank Moyer, and the main focus of today's webinar will be looking at the effects of transformations on graphs of functions, and also at the application of uh, matrices to transformations. If time permits, we'll also have a quick look at composite functions. Okay, so I'm going to do a series of demonstrations, and for all of these demonstrations, the basic graph I'm going to start with is the graph of y equals root x with a domain from 0 to 16. And what I'll be looking for in the first one is the effect of the translation that maps the graph, the graph of f to the graph of g and also explore the uh, domain under the transformation. Now, in all of these demonstrations, it's useful to also look at the effect of the transformation on individual points on the graph. So what I've done here, I'll erase that and start again. Okay, so I've got a graph, uh, on, the, on my graph, I've got a point P on the graph, and the image is P dashed, and it's been translated. Now, this directed line segment here can direct the size of the transformation. Now, if I go back to the start and I get a trace of the image of the point P and I animate the point, I see the effect of the translation of individual points on the graph. All right, so I can see from those points that not only has the graph been translated, the domain has also shifted. We see that the whole of the domain has been shifted from 0 to 16 to 0, sorry, to 2 to 18. Now, what about the equation of the new graph? Okay, so we'll explore... Uh, graphs of the form y equals root x minus h. So once again, I've got those points that I got by translating uh, points on the graph. And this time, I've got this slider here, which controls the size of the shift h. So each of these graphs are now y equals root of x minus h. So here it's h um, equals 1, so root h minus 1, h minus 2. And we see, unsurprisingly, that that is, in, in fact, the equation of the graph that fits perfectly through those points. But the important point here is that it's not only the rule of the function that has changed under the transformation, the domain has also shifted accordingly. So to summarise, um, a translation of two units to the right, we can see that the domain has shifted and the rule of the function, or the, the, the rule of the graph is now y equals root x minus 2. Or if we were to generalise that to any function, the graph would be y equals f of x minus 2. All right. So what about translations to the left? So I can do a similar sort of thing. So this time I have my point P, which I can animate, and I have the image P dashed. And the P dashed, I can control the size of the shift using this vector or directed line segment here. So I'll do the same as before. I'll get a trace. Try again. And this time, whoops. Try again. There we go. So I've got the trace again. And I can see P dashed. And... Now, let's explore 
what value of H I'm going to need to uh, get the graph that passes through all of those points. So I'm, I've still got graphs of the form Y equals root of X minus H. Now, obviously, going increasing the value of H isn't working. What about decreasing the value of H. So H equals 0, H equals negative 1, H equals negative 2, H equals negative 3. So I need the square root of X minus negative 3, or in other words, Y equals the square root of X plus 3 in order to have the graph that passes through all of those points, which corresponds to a shift of three units to the left, which is not terribly surprising. Okay, so there's the summary there. That's the, the equation of the graph there. Um, y equals root x minus negative 3. And if we to, were to generalise that, uh, for any graph, we're going from y equals f of x to y equals f of x plus h if I've moved h units to the left. OK, so what about translations up and down? So I can do a similar sort of thing, except this time I can see that this, I've got my point P down here at the origin, uh, P dashed up there, and I can animate that again, and I can control the size of the vertical shift there. All right, so I'll once again get a geometry trace. And I can see how each of those points on the graph has been shifted three units up. And this time we see that the domain hasn't changed, but the range has obviously been shifted up three. So instead of the range being from zero to four, it's now from 3 to 7. So let's explore a graph that um, might match each of those points. So let's have a look at graphs of the form y equals root x plus k. And I'll change the value of k. So k equals 1, k equals 2, k equals 3. Unsurprisingly, uh, it's y equals root x plus 3. And if I can see the effect of changing k. So if k is a negative number, then I'm shifting down. If k is a positive number, I'm shifting up. All right. So just to summarise, oh, here I can see the effect of changing both h and k. So here I can change h and change, sorry, change k and change h. And I can see, using the two sliders, the combined effect of both of those uh, translations, both vertical and horizontal translations. Incidentally, if you want to create sliders, all you have to do is enter your equation like f1 of x um, plus h, for example, and you press Enter. And TI and SPY will ask you, do you want to create a slider for H or whatever your parameter or letter is? OK, so um, a shift up is of the form Y equals F of X plus K, where K is a positive number, and down minus K, where K is a positive number. Now, reflections in the x and y axes. So I've got the same function again. So same deal as before. I'm going to get a trace of the point P as P slides along. And this time, I'm going to reflect P in the x-axis. So OK. And we see the, the trace left by those. So we see that the domain hasn't changed, but the range has obviously been flipped. Instead of being 
zero to four, it's now negative four to zero. And what might a graph that fits all of those points be? Well, let's try um, negative root x, y equals negative root x. And we see that, yep, that works. Or if we were to generalize that to any function, a reflection in the x-axis would go from y equals f of x to y equals negative f of x. And similarly, I've done the same thing here, except I've taken my point P and I've reflected P in the y-axis this time. And I've got my series of points that have been traced. And we see that the range hasn't changed, but obviously the domain has been flipped from uh, 0 to 16 to negative 16 to 0. And let's have a look at a rule for that graph. So we see y equals negative uh, root x obviously doesn't work. But if I have y equals the square root of negative x, it clearly passes through all of those points. Or if I was to generalize that for any function, a reflection in the y-axis, it goes from y equals f of x to y equals f of negative x. OK. And just to summarize, original function reflect in the x-axis. That's y equals negative f of x. Reflect in the y-axis, y equals f of negative x. And reflect in the x and y-axis, it's obviously going to be y equals negative f of negative x. All right. So let's move on to dilations. So dilations from the x-axis or parallel to the y-axis. Now, the VCAA publish a syllabus where they say that students need to be familiar with both of those notations, either from an axis or parallel to an axis. So in this case, I start off with my basic function, the same as before. And this time, I'm going from y equals root x to y equals 2 root x. And I can see here that what's happened is that the whole graph has been dilated from the x-axis, or in other words, parallel to the y-axis, by a scale factor of 2. So that although my domain has stayed the same, my range has gone from 0 to 4 to 0 to 8. So let's generalize this for... Uh, any value of a. So I'm going from y equals f of x to y equals a of f of x. And I'll start with different values of a. So here I've got a equals 1 quarter, or 0.25. We see that it's this graph down here, and it's only, it's, it's, so it's a dilation by a factor of a quarter, so that the range, instead of being 0 to 4, is only 0 to 1, a half, dilation by a factor of a half, 3 quarters, and so on. Scale factor of 2, scale factor of 3. You can see that the um, range has gone from 4 to 12. All right, so in general, a dilation by a scale factor of a from the x-axis, or in other words, parallel to the y-axis, is on the goes from y equals f of x to y equals a of f of x. What about dilations from the y-axis or parallel to the x-axis? So in this case. 
we're going from y equals root x to y equals root of 2x. Or in function notation, from y equals f of x to y equals f of 2x. And instead of being a dilation by a factor of 2, we see that it's actually a dilation by a factor of a half. So if we have a look at the range, the range hasn't changed, but the domain has shrunk from 0 to 8, sorry, 0 to 16, down to 0 to 8. All right, well, that's, that's interesting. Uh, let's generalise that for different values of n. So I've got, I'm going from y equals root x to y equals root of n times x. Now, I'll just turn this one off. So I'll start with n equals one quarter. And we see, whoa, it's actually being stretched. In fact, it's, it's off the page. A half. So it's actually been stretched by a factor of two. So when n is a half, the dilation is a factor of two. So that my domain has gone from 0 to 16 to 0 to 32. Oops. All right, as we saw, a dilation factor of a half when I have the square root of 2 to the x. So let's try 3. And 3 is only one-third as much. So there seems to be a reciprocal relationship between the value of n and the dilation factor. So when n is 3, that's a dilation by a scale factor of one-third parallel to the x-axis or from the y-axis. And that's summarised in this next slide. So here, when we have um, the square root of y equals the square root of nx, the domain is actually 16 divided by n. So there is that reciprocal relationship. Now, the thing that probably causes the most grief for students with regards to transformations are matrices, certainly uh, when it comes to exam questions. So let's first of all see if we can unpack what this means. So you would have seen matrix equations like this for transformation. So the XY, so I've got this column matrix here, XY. So think of that XY as being the coordinates of point P. So I've got point P on the graph. So this X coordinate here is the X, and that one is the Y. The X dashed and Y dashed are the coordinates of P dashed, which is the, trans the point under the transformation. And the H and the K are just the length of the length and direction of the the translation. So here, if the translation is three units to uh, horizontally three units, then H is three. If here, if we're four units, negative four units. Uh, down, then the value of k is negative 4. So when I multiply out the matrix, uh, or sorry, when I um, do the addition on the matrix, it's very straightforward. x dash is just x plus h, y dash is y plus h. This is plus k. Now, the identity transformation. Now, when you multiply matrices, you multiply the rows by the columns and you do the same for the other row with the column. So if I have this matrix here, 1, 0, 0, 1, that's the transformation that leaves the graph unchanged. So x dashed, the image of x is the same as x, and y dashed, the image of y is the same as the original y. 
Now, a reflection in the y-axis, a reflection in the y-axis requires that this element here be negative. The reason being that my, that way, the image of x is negative x. I swap the x values when I reflect in the y-axis, but the y values remain the same. Now, reflection in the x-axis, that requires that this element here be negative. The reason being that when you multiply out the matrix, x dashed is the same as x, but y dashed is the negative, which is what you would expect if you are reflecting in the x-axis. The positive y values become negative and vice versa. Now, dilations are a bit more interesting. So a dilation from the y-axis, so I've got this number here as 2. Now, for this um, template that I've created, and by the way, uh, you'll be able to download the template that I've made and um, a sheet of 10 exam-style practice questions from the TI um, Australia website. Uh, once it's been uploaded there, you should be receiving a link to that. So in this template, instead of using x dashed and y dashed, I've called them x1 and y1. The reason being that Inspire will treat x1 and y1 as separate variables, whereas it's not too sure what to do with x dashed and y dashed. So this x1 and y1 is the same as the dashes. And what I've done here is I've got my transformation matrix and I want to solve for x and y. In other words, I want to multiply it out and then make x and y the subject. And I'm storing that. That's what this arrow means here. I'm storing that as a variable t. So it's not rocket science. It's just saying it's, it's just um, multiplied it out and rearranged it. x is x dashed divided by 2. y is y dashed. Now, I can put in any equation there. In this case, the equation is y equals root x. And when I evaluate that, I see that the equation of the graph under that transformation is y dashed equals x dashed divided by 2. So effectively, having a 2 here has halved the, the y values, or the range, if you like. So effectively, it's a dilation by a factor of a half. Now, I could change that equation to anything else. For example, I could make that 10 to the power of x. And I can now see that I now have y dashed is 10 to the x dashed over 2. So I can see, once again, a dilation by a scale factor of a half. The two ends up uh, in the denominator. So with a template like this, which has been created in um, using maths boxes in a notes page, you, it's very easy to edit. If you do the same thing in a calculator page, then in order to edit it, you have to copy, keep copying and pasting, which is really tedious and, and um, not very helpful. OK, so a dilation from the x-axis. So this time I've got a 3 here. I wonder what the effect of having 3 there is. So I've done the same thing. I'm going to, what this solve command does is it multiplies out the matrix it makes x and y the subject and stores it in t. Then what this next command does is it substitutes, that's what the given t is, it substitutes x and y into the equation, that is the x dashed and the uh, x dashed over 3 into the original equation and makes y dashed the subject. 
So the image of y equals 6x under that transformation is y, y dashed equals 18x dashed. So that is a dilation by a scale factor of 3. All right, now this template can then be used to do um, any of these uh, questions. So for example, I've got this in an exam question, you might be given uh, an ugly looking transformation like this, and you might be interested in the image of the graphs under that transformation. So all you do is you edit the matrix after you've downloaded it. So you just have to edit these values in here, uh, edit the equation, press enter. So it's x in terms of x dashed. And that which would be extremely difficult to do by hand very simple using this template. All right, I could edit that. So if I wanted to have, it doesn't have to be in function that, um, form. If I had x minus y equals zero, I could edit that to x minus y equals zero. And there's the equation of that line under the transformation. Okay, so the one, the, the, the type of problem that is really tricky, that students quite find really difficult, are those which are what I call reverse transformations. So you're going from, say, y equals negative x plus one all squared minus three, back to the original graph, y equals x squared. Now, there was a question very similar to this in the Northern Hemisphere, uh, last year's Northern Hemisphere exam, um, which you can get from the VCAA website. If you Google VCAA Northern Hemisphere past papers, you look at last year's paper, it's got a question very similar to this, and students find this really difficult. So, what values am I going to need for A, B, C, and D to go from the more complex graph to the simpler graph? Now, if you use this template, it, the complexity doesn't really matter. The only thing you really need to realize is that if you're going from having a two here in front, in front of the X, to not having it in front of the X, you're actually going to need A equal to two, which is rather counterintuitive. You think, oh, it's half as much, therefore I need, to, I need to have a half there. No, because when you rearrange, in order to get X dashed over two, you need the two for the A. Once you realize that, you can narrow down the possibilities. Let's go back to the original problem. There were five five options, two of them had A equal to two, the other three options had A equal to a half. So we know that it, you should be able to narrow it down to either option A or option B. So all you do is edit your matrix over here and put in your equation, press enter, press enter again, and if it's correct, I should get x dashed equals, uh, sorry, y dashed equals x dashed squared. And bingo, that's exactly what you get. x dashed is equal, uh, sorry, y dashed equals x dashed squared. If I tried option B, in fact, it doesn't work, you get this other equation. So, that template can be used in a multiple choice question as well, just by trying some of the different alternatives. And I have about two minutes left, so in that time I'll just, uh, on composite functions, um, the main thing I wanted to emphasize was that 
if you define two functions f and g, and to find the composite function g of f of x, Inspire has no trouble in giving you the rule. However, you get this warning signal, a symbol. Okay, so you not only need to consider the rule, but also does it exist? So you need to consider the domain restrictions. So this slide here, I think, contains the crucial information that the composite function is defined if and only if the range of the inside function is a subset or is equal to the domain of the outside function. And then the domain of the composite function is the same as the domain of the inside function. So I think that that slide there, uh, very, very important that you uh, be mindful of that when you're finding rules uh, using Inspire for composite functions. And I think my time is finished. So thank you very much for your attention. And remember that uh, there is that template and the practice questions uh, soon to be available on the website. Okay, thank you.